talk about the experience of an organization with which I was engaged uh, uh, now about 27, 28 years uh, ago. Uh, it's had its own journey, and I've been I was very intensely involved in it in its in its early years, uh, much less in recent times. Uh, but uh, I'll tell you the story briefly because it, it's important to locate its context, but more about what learnings I think there is for the subject that we have at hand. Uh, brief autobiographical uh, description will be necessary, and I apologize for that. I, it was my first posting. Uh, I joined in a small town called Barwani uh, in Madhya Pradesh uh, as a subdivision magistrate. And uh, uh, you have, you know, uh, you have processions coming and you know, demonstrations, etc. So I, just, I made a rule for myself that whenever any demonstration comes, I should come out and meet people and talk to them, etc. So I came out one day uh, with this demonstration. I found a very unlikely kind of very motley group of uh, of people. It was about two, three hundred uh, uh, leprosy disabled. Uh, highly, uh, uh, you know, uh, their hands and you know, with studs, etc. They were all coming in this procession, and they had some very modest demands. They, they said they had a settlement where they wanted uh, a drinking water point and some electricity, etc. <coughs> so I said that you know that's fine, but why why don't I come and see your settlement? So uh, I went down and I spoke to them. And uh, it struck me that uh, that you know, when I heard their stories, that uh, they were the people probably I'd met uh, in my life who were the most exiled, uh, even from hope. Because however stigmatized you might be, uh, you uh, most other people, except people who suffer from certain kinds of disability, uh, like leprosy, uh, you at least can fall back on your community and your family. These are people who were cast away even by their uh, own families, their loved ones, uh, because of the fear of their illness. They were grappling with an illness, uh, 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 which they were terrified by. Uh, nobody gave them work. Everyone treated them with, you know, as if they were the, uh, you know, uh, with the kind of fear and, uh, and hatred. And their own loved ones, spouses, parents, had, had cast, cast them away. And uh, a former ruler of, of Barwani town had, had given a space where leprosy patients were allowed to go and live in a kind of separate part of the... Uh, and this, this was really a hovel, so all from all across the tribal region, leprosy patients had gathered and then they would marry between themselves. And therefore this community came up and there were these people with, uh, 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 and it, it really struck me that 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 they were, they were the furthest from hope uh, that I had seen any human being, exiled from hope in a sense. So there was just an idea, I said that, you know, you all beg you know, for a living and you lead such uh, you know, uh, unhappy lives. So suppose, uh, you know, we, we were able to work together for a new chance, suppose you could get work uh, and uh, you could, you know, how many of you would like to work? And it's a memory I always carry because across the skyline, you know, every hand went up and they were all uh, stubs of hands. And they all said that they wanted work. And I remember uh, uh, what Baba Amte had given a slogan, which I love a lot, which is uh, that I don't want your charity, I only want a chance. Uh, and, uh, and that we condemn most people uh, without ever giving uh, them a chance. So it was, a, it was at that level quite a simple idea, it was, you know, can we create a, a but I also realized that uh, in, in, in government service you have a short tenure and it's not likely to, to, to endure if I just did it as a government for progress. So then I started having a series of discussions in the, uh, with the people of Barwani. And I remember there was enormous hostility because people, uh, you know, people really had a lot of fear and prejudice against the segment of people. And it's the gentlest of people, that's, that, that's something aside. Uh, but uh, that, we, uh, that you're blaming people uh, 
but we've never given them a chance and we're blaming them. Uh, uh, and, uh, but I said that I have to do this work but I can't do it without some of you coming forward. And then a small group of people over a week uh, came. There was a businessman, there was, uh, I remember a, a school teacher who was also a communist, a CPI member who used to organize them in some kind of a, he was the one who brought the procession and there was a Catholic nun. So it was quite an unusual group. There was a doctor. And we constituted the Ashagram Trust and we said, let's start. And uh, the, the businessman said that my contribution will be to build this whole place. And uh, it, it was strange, I was the STM, I didn't have, uh, I wasn't able to get land, I wasn't able to persuade the director who thought it was a terrible idea. And, uh, but I, I was stubborn, I said I'll still find some way. So uh, a, a, a landless widow, uh, actually, uh, I mean a, a childless widow, one day said she wanted to donate one acre of land. So I said, this is it, let's take it, and we'll encroach all around. Mm -hmm. And uh, so all of Ashagam is actually still an encroachment. Uh, so we just started off, and we said, this is our land. And we built around it. And it was literally over two to three months that the whole colony of about 300, they chose the place. And uh, the colony came up, and uh, they, they moved in. And uh, we, we started uh, hand looms and khadi and some such uh, things. Uh, I got posted out within about eight months of my transfer for other reasons. I was trying to distribute land, uh, I was trying to take back land from tribal people, which was uh, which had been uh, which they had been deprived of, uh, and that caused a lot of problems. So I was quickly moved out, uh, but. Uh, uh, this relationship with Ashagram has continued. I go back two or three times a year, uh, and it really grew into something very beautiful uh, because the promise that they made that they would never beg, they never, they never went back on it, whatever was the circumstances. And uh, it was really hard. I mean, I am to tell you one story about stigma and, and how people resist. Uh, there was uh, one of the persons there, Jatin, he, he told me that his uh, father had, he was a small boy, and his uh, father was discovered to have leprosy. His mother abandoned him, uh, and uh, the father hung himself, and then this child was left. Then, since he had nobody, he was made a, a bonded labor in somebody's house, and in a, in a year or so, they discovered but when they put hot water on his leg, they discovered that he, he also had leprosy because he had no feeling. And he was cast away from the village and he didn't know what to do and he went around. And then somebody kindly had told him that there's this place called Bhagwani. So he landed up there and, uh, you know, and he found his way to this settlement. And then he grew up there and finally got married and had uh, a son. And uh, he was determined that his son should, should have an education. And uh, so he went, and there was no question of a leprosy patient son uh, being admitted into a, a school. So he hid his disabilities, and he went there, and he uh, got uh, his son's admission. And they told the son that never recognize us, never acknowledge us when you see see them, see us anywhere on the streets. But one day the little boy was going, and he saw his mother begging on the streets, and he spontaneously ran to her and embraced her. And uh, his classmates got to know that he was a child of a leprosy patient, and there was an uproar, and he was thrown out. Uh, but the father uh, was determined that he should not, uh, he should not, uh, that the boy must study. So he went. He had heard that the Catholic missionaries were, were, were didn't have the same prejudices. So there was a boarding school in another district, and he went there. And he walked in, and he told the mother, uh, "Superior, that you have to take my child." He said, you can't just walk in and just expect us to admit it's the middle of the year and so on. He said, you don't understand. And then he did his own kind of satyagra. He just uh, parked himself outside the convent and he said, I just won't go. And every morning my mother used to go back and forth and said that after about 10 days she, uh, she just decided to take him in. And uh, he gave him, uh, he said that I'll never come back till you grow up. We'll never see you. We'll never come back. And uh, 
so that our, you know, the prejudice against us will not fall on you. On you. And uh, so this uh, child grew up and uh, he's today an engineer, actually. Uh,